All right, so looking forward this week, next week, following week. So this week we're going to uh, jump into section 4.2. Now you may be saying to yourself, self, we were just in section 4.3. We've always taught it that way. They never liked the way that our old textbook had it in the order that they had it in. And so we're going to do it this week because that's the way we always done it. It works best for us. Okay, so we're going to jump into that today. Tomorrow, um, we're going to uh, continue on our journey with Sokotoa. Um, we're going to introduce some Sokotoa in today. Um, and then tomorrow, we'll, we'll jump into that or more into that and do some more word problems and all that fun stuff. Thursday, we're going to do some reference angles. We're going to make you think. Okay, I like thinking days. Okay? Friday of this week, we're taking a formative. Okay? Then next week, you guys only have class on Tuesday. And juniors in the morning have practice ACT day. So we're going to hand out the review and probably watch a movie next week, Tuesday. Okay. Now, the downfall with that and just how things kind of shake themselves out is that that puts us giving us a week off in the middle of a chapter. Okay. Because then the, when we come back from Thanksgiving, then one, your unit circle projects are due. We got to get back into reference angles and thinking about Sokotoa and thinking about finding angles and using the unit circle and all that fun stuff. Because right now, we're looking at tentatively having the test for this section on the 30th of November. Now, how that all shakes out after that week off, that test might be pushed back to the 5th of December, but right now it's on the schedule. It's easier for us to go backwards with the test than it is to schedule a test for the 5th and move it forward. Okay? So, Right now it's scheduled for the 30th. We might push that back to the 5th. We don't really know. We're going to wait to make that decision on the 20th. Okay? All right. So today we're going to be in your own notes today. Um, you will need your obviousities packet out because of the warm-up problem and, and some stuff that we have going on with that one. And we need some some of the things from the obviously packet. And then just make sure that you have, one, that you have all three homework pages up to this point in time. They're all on uh, cream paper. Okay. So you should have a trig values one, a trig values two, and a trig values three. Then tomorrow you'll get a note sheet that has extra problems on the back. For you, you'll get uh, another worksheet for that one tomorrow too. Thursday, you'll get a sixth worksheet, and then you've got a uh, review homework that um, that you get next week. So you'll have seven total homework to do this run. Okay. So here we go. So given the fact that the sine of t is negative 12 thirteenths, I want you to find me the following six things. One, I want you to find me what quadrant t could possibly be in. Two, I want you to find me what the sine of negative t is. Three, I want you to find me what the sine of t plus pi is. Four, I want you to find me what the sine of t minus 2 pi is. Five, I want you to find me what the cosine of t is. And six, I want you to find me the cosine. So in which quadrants is sine negative? Three and four. So this angle could be in quadrant three, or it could be in quadrant four. Because we can't base that off of one value, we need to base it off of two values. And we only have one, so therefore it's in three or four. From the obviosities, the sine of negative t, I believe this was number six on the obviosities, was equal to negative sine of t. So the negative of negative 12 thirteenths 
is positive 12 thirteenths for that one. Okay. Sine of t plus or minus pi is equal to from the obviosities is equal to negative sine of t there so we negative of negative 12 thirteenths is again going to be positive 12 thirteenths sine of t plus or minus 2 pi is the same because you've just gone around a whole nother loop and are at the exact same spot again. So nothing changes if we add or subtract a full loop. It stays the same. Okay. If the sine value is negative 12 thirteenths, then the cosine value is plus or minus 5 thirteenths, depending upon if you're in quadrant 3, it's negative, or quadrant 4, it's positive. I will pause here for a question. Do you want to ask the question? Because your face already asked it. It's the sine value. I want it to be the cosine value now. No, because remember, because from the first one on the on the obviosities, sine and cosine have to be in between negative one and positive one. Now, so some, does somebody want to ask the question, or are we too proud to? Yeah. What? Yeah. No, I already know what the question is. I'm waiting for you guys to ask the question. That's the question, right? Yeah. How did I get that? Rather than sit here and and just sit here. Yep, that's what it is. Yep, I have no idea what he's doing. Nope, let's just sit here and just let Lynn's keep talking. Or we could do what? We could ask what? How? 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 Okay, so let's talk obviosities. What was number two in the obviosities? The hammer. The hammer is the tool that you're going to use the most when dealing with the unit circle. The hammer says that the cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t has to be 1. Right? Okay. We know that the sine of t is negative 12 thirteenths. So we got to square that. Okay. We know that. Let's call cosine x. We got to square that. We're going to add that together, and the result has to be positive 1. Okay x squared is just x squared. Nothing I can do with that. Negative 12 thirteenths squared. 144 over 169. Do I like 1 as it's written? I like one, one written as 169 over 169. Because what do I got to do next? Subtract my 144 over 169. That's why we chose 169 over 169. Okay? So then that's going to give me 25 over 169. Now what? Okay, so I'm going to square root this. If I square root that, 
what automatically, because I'm solving, what automatically comes into play? Plus or minus. Left side is x. What is my right side? What is the square root of 25, 169? 5 thirteenths. The reason that it also, one, because we're solving and we took the square root, it has to be plus or minus. So that's one reason. The other reason is because what did we just find? We just found the cosine value, correct? Okay. So if I scroll way back up, if I'm in quadrant three, what's cosine? Negative. If I'm in quadrant four, what's cosine? Positive. So it has to be plus or minus because we don't have it narrowed down to one specific quadrant. Okay. Now that we know that the cosine is plus or minus 5 thirteenths, now we can find the cotangent. The cotangent of t is going to be x over y or, oops, I almost put sine, or cosine over sine, which in this case, is going to be plus or minus 5 thirteenths over negative 12 thirteenths. Now, truthfully, when we're doing this maths, the signs, the S-I-G-Ns in front of the, the fractions mean nothing because there's a plus or minus there. So we know in the end the answer is going to be plus or minus. Okay? Keep change flip tells me I've got 5 thirteenths times 13 twelfths. My 13 would cancel each other out. That leaves me with plus or minus 5 twelfths as my quotient. Questions on those six. Just when you think you have all of the answers to the unit circle, I go and I change the question. So up to this point, we have been saying, find me the cosine value at a specific angle, okay? So you would go to that angle and you would find the trig value that we're asking for at that angle and have yourself a great, grand, and wonderful day. Now, what we are doing is we are saying the trig value of some angle is this, find me the angle. We're doing the same thing, just in reverse. Okay? Now, in order to do this, we have to be specific as to where we are. Because if you've noticed, if you've observed the unit circle, we have multiple values. Cosine is the same at pi over 3 as it is at 5 pi over 3. Sine is the same at 7 pi over 6 as it is at 11 pi over 6. Tangent is the same at 7 pi over 4 as it is at 3 pi over 4. Okay? There's multiple values out there for us. Okay? So you have to read not only the problem, but you might have to read the direction. So first off, the first direction in this problem says that we are solving this without the calculator. Okay. So that's good. We'll get the calculators later. The second thing says that theta is an acute angle. So where on the unit circle 
are all of my acuate angles. First quadrant. First quadrant. So I right now we're only looking in quadrant number one. Okay. So looking only in quadrant number one, what angle has a cosine value of square root three over two? Five over six. Five over six. Okay. Because I'm looking for the x core part of the coordinate. Where is it? Three pi over two. It happens to be right here at pi over six. So theta, my angle, is pi over six. Looking only in quadrant number one. Where is my tangent 1? Pi over 4. Why pi over 4? What is tangent? Y over x, right? So they have to be the same in order for it to be equal to 1. That happens in quadrant 1 at pi over 4. Looking only at quadrant number one, where is my sine value positive one half? Pi over six again. Now I'm looking for the y value, so that would be at there, which again is. Your test on this unit is prime for a matching part to it, okay? because there really is only five values on the unit circle, okay? zero, one, one half, root two over two, and root three over two. Now you've got the positives and the negatives of the one over two, but there are really only those five values on the unit circle, which means we could have an entire page worth of matching because we could say, you know, negative of, you know, answer A is, have, you know, 17 different ones to go along with. Okay. With that being said, again, sticking with no calculator and sticking in quadrant number one, you find me where the tangent of theta is the square root of three and where the cosecant of theta is square root of two. So right away at number four, okay, I can rule up, so I'm looking at, I, there's only five angles in quadrant number one, right? Okay, <coughs> there's zero, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, and pi over two, right? I can all automatically, let's see if I can do this, rule out three of them, right? Why can I rule out those three? Because none of those have the square root of three in them. Okay? So they're gone. Okay? Which means I really only got to look at pi over three, and I got to look at pi over six. So if I'm looking at pi over three, tangent is y over x. So that's going to be the square root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. If I'm looking at pi over 6, that's going to be 1 half and over with 3 over 2. Keep changing and flipping, or the fact that because they're all over the same denominator, they, you know, the fractions within the fractions have the same denominator, those... <coughs> cancel each other out. So this one would be the square root of 3. This one would be 1 over the square root of 3. Okay. So that tells me that theta here is pi over 3. Looking in quadrant number one, because that's the quadrant that we're locked into, 
I've got five angles. I can rule out how many of them for the next one. I can rule out four of them. Zero and pi over two are gone because those only have zero and ones. I can rule out pi over three, that's this one, and I can rule out pi over six, right? Because those have square roots of threes in them, and what's the only one that doesn't have a square that has a square root of two in it? Pi over four. Okay. Okay. So this one has to be pi over four. My favorite part of that whole scenario was watching your faces of like, is Linsmeyer truly going to flip the class off? And yes, when I'm dealing with quadrant number one, it's not good. It's pi over four. It was, it was kind of funny watching. Yeah. Does anybody need me to actually prove that that is true? That the quote. No, I did that. I don't have to prove it. I did it. Anybody need me to mathematically prove that cosecant is root 2? Was that a yes? Because I'll do it. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's the nice part. Now, let's get outside of quadrant number one because let's be honest, things happen outside of quadrant number one too. Okay. Right? So the first thing that you've got to determine is looking at this extra condition right here, what quadrant does that place me in? That places me in quadrant number two, because we're going from pi over two, which is straight up, to pi, which is quadrant number two. So that's locking this one now in as a quadrant two angle. So based off of that, now looking solely in quadrant number two, which angle has a cosine value of negative root 3 over 2? Pi okay. over 6. So theta here is 5 pi over 6. You can always keep, keep it in quadrant 1 if you want to have it in the hard one. It's quadrant three. <laughs> See, but I'm right handed. How am I going to write with that if I'm using this as my, you know? Ah, so many. There you go. So many answers. Okay? You find me those two theta values. Okay? So, what quadrant does this put us in? Three. That puts us in quadrant number three. Okay, so we just learned on the last slide that at pi over 3, at the pi over 3s, it was square root of 3. At the pi over 6s, it's 1 over the square root of 3. So knowing that fact, I'm going to try here in quadrant number 3, I'm going to try 7 pi over 6 as my first attempt. Okay? Sine at 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half over negative square root 3 over 2. Again, they have the same denominators within the fractions in the fractions, so those cancel each other out. Negative divided by a negative is positive. That leaves me with 1 over the square root of 3. To rationalize that because my denominator here was rationalized, I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, and that is going to give me the square root of 3 over positive 3. That's what I want. So theta is 7 pi over 6. Now, if I take away the reasoning of because we haven't done quadrant four yet, 
Why is number three in quadrant four? So cosine is what? No, it says cosine is greater than zero. Okay. So cos so this part. Let me scroll down a little bit more. So this part, come on down. This part tells me that I can be in quadrant one or four. Right? Is that what you're saying, D? Yeah. Okay. Right? And What's the other part the saying? But so that means that one's going to be in or three. So because I have both of them together, that puts this in quadrant four. Okay. So cosecant is one over sine. So I'm really looking for where the sine is because there's no radicals involved. I'm looking for where the sine doesn't have a radical in quadrant four. The only one in quadrant four that doesn't have a radical in the sine value is 11 pi over six. Okay. So I am thinking that theta is 11 pi over six. If that is the case, one over negative one half, keep changing and flipping. gets me my negative 2, which is what I need it to be. So theta, therefore, is 11 pi over 6. Okay? All right. Let's, let's bring back our old friend. We're going to meet up with them, have some coffee. Reintroduce ourselves, tell us all about our kids, all that fun stuff. Okay? So, back when you were a tree, you learned all about Sokotoa. Okay? Sine is in a right triangle. Now, this only works in right triangles. Sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side. So okay. control. Much easier than the way that us old codgers learned it back in the 80s. Okay. That's 1980s. Okay. Back before cell phones. We learned it as some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. And if you didn't like horses, you could use tangents. Then you had to use horses. Well, use, like horses or heads. Then you got to go with hippopotamuses. Yeah. 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 Hermit crabs. Hermit crabs. Yeah. yeah. So, first we got to lock in where our angle is. Then we got to determine what we have. What two sides of the triangle do we have in relation to our angle given? We have the adjacent one, which is the 23 or the X. The 23 is my adjacent side. The other one's the hypotenuse. Why is it the hypotenuse? Because it's across from the 90. So we have ah. Which one uses ah? Oh, no. Oh, cosine. Oh, cosine uses ah. Okay. So the cosine of my angle is going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So in this particular case, the cosine of 39 degrees would be equal to 23 over x. Now we need to solve this for x. I don't need to. How do we solve for x? Is there an x in the cosine? 
we can re we can flippity floppy the x and the cosine because we could multiply both sides by x and then divide both sides by cosine or we could just do that all in a mathematical step and say x here equals 23 divided by the cosine of 39 degrees with me notice what i haven't touched yet say louder d haven't touched the calculator yet. I did all of my work. Now that my work is done, now we can go to a calculator. Provided that your calculator is in degrees. Okay? If your calculator is not in degrees, make sure you know how to put it in degrees because we will be switching back and forth from radians to degrees. You should see a D or a DEG somewhere on your calculator. If you don't have a calculator, for purposes of today, you may use your smartphone, because your smartphone, when you turn it to the side, becomes a scientific calculator. Okay? I get 29.59547.00155428. Typically, following the directions, because it's pretty evident in, in this section, or pretty important, you read the directions for your problem. Typically, we round to the tenths in these right triangle trig problems. So x here would be 29.6. Yep. Good on that one. Yep. The other thing that we can do in terms of these is we can say, here's a triangle. Find me the six trig values to go along with it. Well, the first thing that you need in order to find the six trig values that go along with the triangle is you need to have all three sides. Okay? In this particular case, if given two, then I can use our old friend, the Pythagorean theorem. And that 5 squared plus 12 squared is h squared. 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. Those added together is 169. The square root of 169 is h. Which is 13. Yes, ma'am. It is a Pythagorean triple, but that doesn't necessarily work every single time. So you got to know the Pythagorean theorem also. Okay? Once you have that, that missing side, so now we know that h here is 13, now you can go through and you can say, well, the cosine of theta then is my adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 12 thirteenths. The secant of theta then would be 13 twelfths. The sine of theta would be 5 thirteenths which means the cosecant of theta would be 13 fifths. The tangent of theta would be 5 twelfths, which means the cotangent of theta would be 12 
and all six of those would be what we are looking for in that problem. Okay. Good times. 